Hello my brothers and sisters of the Order, welcome back to the Order, I'm Celtic Templar, and yes y'all, we are going to be talking about a new set of armor, or testing a new set of armor, this is uh, from Lords of Battles, this is their laminar armor, it's made of 20 to 18 gauge steel, now, I had to put this out y'all, here y'all, we will be testing this out with three parts, first part we will be testing out with is going to be, well, the melee, then we're going to go to throwing or range weapons, which will be the type of weapons you might have seen, such as javelins or pelums or even slings and throwing hatchets and crossbows and even bow and arrow. But then, when it comes to part three, we will be using firearms, so in which I pretty much bet a lot of people will start going into there. Uh, but one thing I want to put this out here, y'all, this armor has been made by Lord's Battles. Now, they did do a very good job, as I said, it's 18 to 20 gauge steel, which, uh, now I hear many people already tell me that's not a very good quality of metal. Well, technically it is and technically it isn't, depending on the culture in which it's supposed to be used in. And in such, this armor has been used throughout centuries, from the late Bronze Age period and up until the 1800s, depending on the region. In fact, if we know from the movie Alexander, which is probably one of my favorite of antiquity-style uh, historical warfare type of movie, especially based on Alexander the Great, we can actually see Alexander the Great wearing a type of laminar armor on his, or a, uh, that were sewn onto his Greek lionel thorax, which, in truth, laminar was seen in historical warfare with the Greeks. However, if you were very rich, you could afford something like this on your lionel thorax. Now, the lionel thorax, as we all know in history, was used, but as well, the Greeks also did use laminar. The same with the Persians. In fact, in the movie Alexander, we do see the uh, Persian army under Darius using a certain armor like that in this type of video. Now, we do have to understand, though, is why is it that they would have used it like this? Well, kind of obvious, it was manufactured to stop certain weapons. Now, we will be using certain weapons it would have gone up against, such as from spears to the uh, axes, swords, maces, and so on, which, yes. Now, most of the time, though, this armor would have mostly been used by steppe people or nomadic type people, such as like we see in, well, uh, Asia, or in fact, uh, Eurasia, as many people pronounce it, and which is like the steppe people regions, such as the Cumans, the Huns, the Mongols, or as well, yes, the Persians, and some parts of Chinese, and even Japanese culture. However, in European culture, it was used from the late Bronze Age up until somewhere around the 1500s, give or take. And as well, the late Roman Empire did use this armor, the uh, Greeks did use this armor, as well use this armor, the Macedonians, as well as some say the Carthaginians, which uh, it's a 50-50. But the Vikings had well used this, and as well the Kievan Rus, and as well the Byzantine military, and including there even been the uh, the infamous House Carls, who which were stated to have actually been part of the Varangian Guard, would have might have used something like this, and as well so did the Vikings, part of the Varangian Guard, did use something like this. Now there is actually somewhat of a weird historical timeline of stating that. Even the Normans might view something like this. I don't know if that's true. We're, in fact, we're trying to look up information for that is kind of hard. Now, mostly the only thing that's holding all these plates together is this leather. And this leather is doing its job, actually. Moving around in it does not seem that much of a deal. Now, what we do have on our target will be also this gamazon, which is over uh, held in place with my one of our very old shirt that I no longer wear. Uh, now, in such, we're going to actually see on how well it actually can withstand certain weapons of melee. Now, we're first going to go with melee, then we're going with range, and then we're going to go with uh, the more, uh, well, modern firearms. Now, the last time Europeans used this would be the Russians, or in this case, the Moscowians, as they were known as in history during the 1500s, underneath Ivan the Terrible, or Ivan the Great, depending on which one you want to put it in as. And in such, this stuff would have actually seen firearms. Now, I want to put this out here. 
most of the time when it came to this armor, it would have downgraded over time, but in historical warfare, this armor would have actually been used enough to stop certain weapons. So in other words, there were weapons that could st it could stop, but there were some weapons it could not stop. Now, what would this be? Well, swords would be one of the biggest ones. However, uh, I want to put this out here. And when it came to maces and warhammers, not so much. And when it came to axes, probably not so much as well. And, and such, this armor was also used by the Roman cataphract, or cataphractari, depending on what you want to pronounce it as. And in such, that if none of you know what these guys were, these guys were technically the uh, antiquities knight, I guess you could call them that. Uh, but in such, this armor is entirely well, impressive to its historical timeline. Now, I want to put this out here, though. When it came to Asia, on the other hand, the last time it had ever seen on the main continent of Asia would have to be somewhere during the 17 or 1600s. And this is when gunpowder was mostly being used. However, the Japanese, who had also started using gunpowder, rarely did actually start still using this. In fact, this type of armor would evolve into the later Japanese style armor as we know it. However, this design was a lot different in historical timeline. And in fact, uh, there were different designs of laminar in history depending on the region. So it depended on the region. Now, this model though, it's based off of the Roman uh, or Byzantine or Viking design, such as what the Cataphactari, the late Roman Empire, or as well the Vikings would have used. So this armor would have been historical to that timeline. So we are going to pretty much use mostly the weapons it might have actually seen in history and use them against this. So why don't we get right into that and we can see what it does, shall we? Hello my brothers and sisters of the Order, welcome back to the Order from Celtic Templar. And yes y'all, we are getting into another armor test. This is going to be a laminar. Now, I don't know because uh, if y'all actually uh, heard me a little while ago, laminar is this type of armor that has been used for centuries and such, and I thought to myself, we have to test it out. So, yeah, uh, why don't we actually take a look at the array of weapons and we can get right started, shall we? Alright, uh, pretty much as you all can see, we are going to be going with a massive amount of weapons here. We pretty much are going to be first starting off with spears, and which are the most primary type of weapon used in history. Which we're first going to use this uh, one-handed spear, then we're going to go with the two-handed spear. Then we're going to go into ancient antiquity to like swords, like a gladius, or in this case a quama, and as well a falcata, and then later on a spatha. Then we're going to go into much of the more modern medieval type swords, like a falchion, or even a broadsword. As well, yes, we will be going to a great sword, but I don't think that's going to make much of a difference. And then we're going to pretty much move up to axes, warhammers, and maces. In which we're going to see on how much the devastation power is with these type of weapons in historical warfare. So, why don't we get right to it, shall we? Alright y'all, first we're going to go with a one-handed spear. We're going to see what it does to the lamin off. My best bet is probably not being with the thrust. Because mostly I can only see it being damaged to the opening. So, why don't we see... Uh, no damage. I did hit right here, but there's no sort of damage on the other hand. This is the thing about laminar games, it's folding plates, if you can say, all weaved together by leather. Because the only way you can easily get a damage in is by going into the exposed areas. This is why laminar was used for so long, so... Yeah, this is going to be a pretty big one that we have to understand. So I'm glad my tip didn't get that badly down, so I'm not going to try that again. Alright, y'all. Next, we're going to go with a two-handed spear. With a thrust like this might be enough powerful. However, I don't know if this might have worked in history, because uh, spearmen, like pikemen, would have probably stopped whatever uh, military that which was using this at the time. So we're going to see. However, it probably would have made him cough. Ooh. Oh, that would have made him cough. Okay, it dented the... Yeah, it really dented it in. However, this did not break the leather, so this 
this guy is technically still alive. All I need to do is just hammer this in and it's perfectly to be workable. So yeah, let's get a little bit of a close up, shall we? All right, now take a look at this, ladies and gentlemen. That that is just pure devastation. Now, this would have made him the guy technically cough, but this would not have killed him. So he's technically still alive. However, he probably has been pushed to the ground because of this, but that in no way is a killing blow. We should start moving on to bigger weapons. Okay, now we're going to go to a short sword like this, or as some people call it a gladius, or eastern gladius, or a quama. Uh, I don't think a thrust is going to do anything, nor with a cut. So, but, still, so y'all want this, so let's see what happens. It did nothing. It a stab. I wonder what might happen when we do a cut. Go to the stomach and the shoulders. I really 
devastated the leather on here. But other than that, not much of a blow unless we count this one on top. But our, oh, yeah, uh, here, this is where we have a major dent in. But I will be showing y'all the entirety of this later on on what how much this thing can take. So I'm taking one blow from each area to show y'all of how much this armor can take. Yeah, I already heard y'all. Y'all want me to use the great sword. Uh, I don't know what might happen with this, because this might actually do something. Uh, first, what I'm going to do is come um, with a downward chop onto his shoulder area, then to a swing to the side, and then pretty much do a forward thrust. So let's see what happens. much less damage than our little hatchet, so yeah, that's kind of horrifying. Now we're going to see what happens when it comes to a Crusader Axe versus an Islamic Caliphate armor. Let's see. What I'm going to have to do is do, first do a cut, kind of stab, and then use the spike in. Now, this is us with one hand first, and then I'll go to two hands. So we're going to see how much devastation power this has. Uh, 
So this guy might have actually been on the ground now, and we are losing our several layers of laminar. Literally, they are just hanging by small chunks of leather thread. So this is not going to be well. The Hungarian wants avenge! The Hungarian wants avenge! Ah! <laughs> okay, this thing is light and powerful enough to do that, don't you know I don't think our guy's gonna end up <laughs> taking me down. Oh. Okay, I have not done a review on this one yet because. This one is still being measured, but it is tightened on. This is our cold steel bite, uh, well, pole axe, I guess you can call it that. This pole axe blade, rusty blade, as well, a hammer. So, this might do something. Alright, now it's time for the Warhammer. Uh, Thor may have his hammer, but I have mine. <laughs> ah. Ooh, came in a little too much at the side, so I'm going to try that again. Hit in the same spot. I just keep hitting these two spots. doing his job. Man, if I was this guy, this guy would probably have broken bones by now. Alright, time for the piece of this assault. A medieval style mace. Now this one has the lit period, so by this point in time, this armor would have been useless against this thing. So we're going to see what happens. I'm going to try hitting him up here to give him a little more break. Dead, okay, y'all. Let's just get a little bit more of a closer view to this. Oh, but this is just devastating for this guy. Look at it. We tore open this area, but he's still technically alive because of our gambeson. Otherwise, this would definitely be a killing blow all over. His arm up here is still attached, but I'm going to have to think of a way to probably reattach this so that way it has more of a tighter fit because this stuff just broke off instantly. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to have to work with this in, to, for our part two, which we are going to be doing in a part two, to shooting this thing and seeing how tough it is. Now, laminar is tough, so we're going to see, well, pretty much we're going to first use projectile weapons, then we're probably going to shoot with modern day firearms, or black powder firearms and such. So, projectile weapons are soon to be up, but we're probably going to use the other side, and not this side, because this... This looks devastating by far because his entire chest is just open here. Look at this. This is just gruesome. The plates are just falling out. He is barely alive. And don't get me started on the shoulders. The shoulders are also, the leather has been ripped off just from the impact alone. See, this is why when it comes to this armor, this armor was king of its day, but it's just devastating to see what we did to it, so. Yeah, that's this horrifying, because look, this is just, the plate just bent out of shape entirely. So yeah, this is why when it came to repairing these, it was not the easiest thing. Look, every part of it just wants to fall out here. Well, we also got some cuts up here into the internal leather area. So this is this 
devastating to see on what happens when you attack somebody with this armor. Now, he is still alive, but the problem is I think he has too much broken muscle and broken bones with all the impact of the weaponry entirely to even still be fighting. So, this is our dead uh, step people or whatever you want to view it as, a cumin, a mongol or whatever. This guy's is, especially for the impact here and here, he's probably going to have internal bleeding. Because this is where I mostly hit him, unless we count uh, sides here and here, which this is just devastating. So yeah, this would have gotten tighter and harder to wear. So our cumin is technically somewhat still alive and somewhat dead, so he's technically limping back to camp. So this would have saved your life back then. So we're going to see what happens when we hit, uh, throw weapons at this thing. And see what happens when it comes to part three, when we try shooting it with, well, modern day firearms. So, yeah, we're going to see. Stay tuned. Okay, now, upon doing that, uh, I know, the damage was a lot. <laughs> Yeah, we got one dead Viking here, <laughs> or whatever you want to put him as. And yes, we could see where all the impacts landed. Mostly of them, most of them actually landed here. Now, do our do our canvas in here, because due to the fact he ha does have a canvas in, this armor did save him. However, if he was not wearing a mixture of canvas in and this armor, he might be dead. So, yeah. <laughs> We kind of got a dead guy here, sort of. He's kind of internal bleeding. But man, these plates have been dented so badly that they are just ready to pop off if it wasn't for the rest of this leather. But, uh, yeah, this leather did do its job. Now, Scalagrim did do some similar tests like this. I will leave links down below. However, he didn't exactly have it tightened on enough. So this, as long as it's tightened, like you would a bulletproof vest, this could actually stop certain weapons. However, we will uh, be doing probably the, uh, hopefully doing the uh, range weapon soon. So stay part for part two and three, so that way you can see what it does. Now, uh, for part two, we're gonna have to do the other end. For part three, we might end up using this frontal end because this is where, right here especially, because it might do a little bit more damage, but it will be a little more accurate. But for part two, we're probably going to use the back end a little more because it's uh, a little less damaged. So, yeah, we're going to see what missile weapons do. We're going to use see what we can do with a sling and such. So I'm kind of wondering how well this armor would stand up against missile weapons and as well later on firearms. But, yes, this is going to be kind of horrifying for all that's a, us because this does not look like it's going to end well because this looking up here I can definitely tell that some of this stuff just wants to just fall off right here so this might be like because we've got to try and make sure it's tight but this all these impacts we made on it especially in the same spot this did a lot of damage but as I said this armor was made to stop certain weapons in history mainly cutting weapons however when we hit it with an axe this did do a lot of damage, so, uh, just alone, I don't know how much more this guy could take. This is just pure saddening to see good armor being destroyed, but we're going to see how much we can do to it. So, yeah, guys, make sure to like and subscribe, and also click that bell button, and as well, also check out us out on Facebook. If any of y'all have any type of armor we should do next, please let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to do it. Uh, now, I want to put this out here, y'all. Uh, if any of y'all are really wanting to see us go and try and go up against a medieval breastplate, we will be probably doing that soon. But yes, as I said, like and subscribe for that way you can help the channel grow, and that way we can also uh, get more subscribers to actually get us higher up, because the more subscribers we get, the more people will stay tuned for all this good stuff. Because this stuff is surprisingly tough, so I'm wondering how much it would take on to take down with firearms. So we're going to see. Now, I will leave links down below if any of y'all want to see 
Skelligrim or Cap and Ball technically go at it with their own design of weapons, but the thing is, we have to make sure it's tightly woven around the body. Otherwise, it won't work. Because Skelligrim had that problem when the leather lacing broke, so that was a major problem for him. So we're going to see on what happens when we do all this. But anyways, guys, hopefully you like and subscribe, and that way we can stay tuned for more videos, because we will be getting into some really, really heavy-duty stuff. But anyways, guys, this has been Templar. Mm -hmm.